greetings to all our learners welcome to the lecture the topic of analysis is regime theory and international relations in this lecture we shall first have a look at the definition of international regimes we shall try to situate that how the concept of international regimes has been viewed by different perspectives and approaches in the domain of international relations theory namely realism neo realism liberalism amongst others and then we shall also try to analyze that when we look at the big picture of global governance wherein the mainstream international relations literature points towards anarchy how does the concept of international regimes present a very significant challenge the lecture shall attempt to situate the concept of international regimes within the framework of various debates in ir in this lecture we shall elaborate on main aspects which are concerning the dynamics of global governance with focus on a very important question that whether international regime theory presents or not some important dynamics and perspectives to the discipline so the plan of argument here that is we will first explain the term international regimes we shall look at the main assumptions of the term and dear learners we must point out point out that like any concept in the realm of international relations theory this is a highly contested term then we shall analyze different theoretical perspectives that is realists neoliberals the cognitivists and then look at few issues concerning global governance with respect to the concept of international regimes stephen krasner defined international regimes as set of principles norms rules and decision making procedures around which actors expect expectations converge in a given issue that is area of international relations krasner developed this very well known definition of international regimes in his work international Re regimes in 1983 edited work that is from cornell university press now when we look at the concept of international regimes it has acquired a new significance with reference to not only theory of ir but as well as with reference to the practical and actual operational perspectives in international relations globalization has led to huge change with reference to theory and practice of international relations one is witnessing rise of new forms of interdependencies in the realm of political relations in the realm of global trade and finance and in all these new realms one finds here that international agreements it uh, rules and norms have an important bearing so regimes no doubt then present not only a new perspective in the discipline but also demand greater attention looking at the new dynamics of the discipline what one finds here is with the rise of trade investment with the rise of global trade and financial apparatus there is a very important realization that theories and practice of international relations cannot ignore that economics is important with respect to international relations in the same vein it is also being said, it is also said that today issues of international relations are not just issues of military security one must factor in concerns of 
non-military areas where economics has an important bearing, where trade ties, investment issues have an important bearing and in this new apparatus regimes through their aspects of norms, ideas, rules play a very important role. In the realist perspective, if we see, we all know first of all that realism has had a huge tradition, starting with Greek philosopher Thucydides, who documented the Peloponnesian war between Athens and Sparta, to Hans Morgenthau, presenting six principles of political realism in his book, uh, in his book Politics Amongst Nations. What we see here is that from classical realism to political realism to later how the work was revised in the uh, work of Kenneth Walt who presented a new realist perspective wherein the six principles of political realism were converted into a definite scientific framework using the theoretical anchors. So, what we get here is that in this big tradition of realism, states are seen as the main rational actor and states aim for survival, securing their national interest in the anarchic international realm. So, survival, statism and self-help, they are the three popular S of the realist framework and these three perspectives namely statism, self-help, survival are there in all the traditions and what we see here is that now this realist framework was somewhere presented a new challenge with the end of the cold war. Our international relations which was often perceived as a discipline of war First World War paving way for the Second World War, Second World War leading to the Cold War. Now in all these different phases of the war, the First World War which was primarily a pan-European war, the Second World War which was again on a bigger scale namely it led to you know rise of new uh, forms of power discourse and war discourse and this was followed by the Cold War which was an ideological war. So, in this big phase, one sees that the idea that states are the rational actor, states seek to secure the national interest and national interest was seen with reference to military power domination. Now, with the end of the Cold War, the rise of globalization, rise of interdependence, one finds that even there are new developments within the work of the theoretical perspectives also. Liberalism and realism, the two very important perspectives to understand and appreciate various concepts and ideas in the realm of international relations also find that new dimensions have emerged in their perspectives too. For example, we just pointed out that how the realist perspective was refined with reference to rise of new realism in the work of Kenneth Waltz, where an attempt was made to redefine the realist assumptions in the broader framework of a scientific theory. In the same vein, liberalism, which often you know stands for ensuring liberty, liberty of the individual in the realm of international relations, liberalism stands for promoting peace and prosperity through trade and other forms of interdependence apparatus. Liberal institutionalism as well as neorealism, one finds here is that in the, with respect to regimes, both did emphasize on the concept of regimes too. For the liberals, if we go by the work, the basic reason for states to create international regimes is to overcome the prisoner's dilemma in international relations. Whereas for the realists, the focus with reference to understanding the concept of regimes and their rise thereof, the focus is on power distribution rather than information and joint gains in explaining the reason why international regimes are 
formulated in the similar way as we are discussing various perspectives and their take on with reference to the concept of international regime is that of the another important perspective comes from the hegemonic stability theory now this theory perceives international regimes as a subsystem of a hegemonic system and how hegemons use its powers to create international regimes we need to take reference to the work by peter has that is on epistemic communities and dynamics of international environmental cooperation now in this work using the concept of international regimes peter has made some very important insights that is international regimes would be created by the hegemon but its substance would be contingent it would be reflect uh, would reflect the epistemic consensus another important perspective that we get with reference to international regimes is from oran yang and we take reference to the work international cooperation building regimes for natural resources and the environment the work is from cornell university press 1989 in this work it is pointed out that regimes are more specialized arrangements that pertain to well defined activities resources or geographical areas and often involve only some subset of members of international society so now when we you know we've just referred to stephen krasner's perspective peter has uh, oran young when we look at the practical side of international relations we hear about wto regime we hear about international monetary fund regime we hear about united nations human rights regime we also hear about global environmental regimes now from global environmental regimes to un human right regime there are these are popular examples of international regimes further to add more in this discussion that there are examples of regimes that is cites convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna another example the basel convention which governs international movement of hazardous waste another example us canada great lakes water quality regimes so as we are looking at these various examples we must point out that regimes may or may not take the form of international organizations further to give an example here global nuclear regulatory regime that is international atomic energy agency does take the form of an international organization whereas on the other hand antarctic treaty system which emerged in 1959 it operates without any administrative apparatus so what we see here is that as we are analyzing various ideas with respect to international regimes regimes vary in other ways as well and we must point out the most significant being their degree of specificity their geographic scope and membership international regimes as we are discussing we must point out that they are linked to international organizations and treaties also international regimes are conceptually institutions which are non material phenomena unlike the international organization which have a material existence with personal staff and budgets international regimes include not only explicit rules like international treaties but they also include implicit customs so this also explains the very important link between international regimes and international organizations 
international regimes and international treaties that is how we must have a look that international regimes have a broader framework that is with you know unlike international treaties they just do not focus on formal rules but international regimes also incorporate implied implicit customs and norms similarly with reference to international organizations regimes are conceptually definitely linked to international institutions but as we saw that some regimes may translate them into an organization others may not now how do regimes work as you know that the discipline of international relations has various perspectives and approaches to analyze any concept similarly with reference to international regimes also there are different approaches and they present different explanation let us now have a look at them according to the realist perspective as pointed out earlier also focus is on the power dynamics the power mechanisms in creating and sustaining regimes as well as what consequences regimes may have for distribution of power in the international system for the neoliberal perspective regimes are mechanisms that facilitate that facilitate achieving optimal outcomes by reducing uncertainty for the cognitivist the constructivist side norms identities the discourse in this uh, for in in this focus regimes are then fundamentally social entities we must refer you know refer to this very important work theories of international regimes from cambridge university press 1997 this is from andreas hasen clever peter mayer and volker rittenberger this very important work theories of international regimes now a next question that comes up that why in the present scenario should we study international regimes the answer lies in the fact that we must know we must understand the means the mechanisms and the conditions under which states cooperate with one another because we must point out that international cooperation international peace and stability in the post cold war era in the world which is defined by globalization liberalization rise of global trade and financial flows values this new world context values international cooperation so in this aspect we must look at that how when issues of security are multidimensional issues of national interest are multifaceted ranging from health to economy to individual safety to technology artificial intelligence gender equity one must focus on that how regimes then you know impress upon the nations to factor in cooperation through various deliberations negotiations cooperation at bilateral multilateral and other global governance forums how do regimes impact international relations this is a very important uh, question that we must deliberate on because as pointed out regimes aid in the process of interaction and communicative realms in the international arena they present a framework within which both states as well as non state actors like ngos multinational corporations transnational organizations civil society follow certain rules and norms then in the similar way they facilitate inter state relations so what we see here is that regimes are no doubt an important development in the discipline of international relations both at the level of theory as well as practice they take the focus away from just mere reliance on military issues and formal international organization now as we refer to uh, stephen krasner's work we must understand that uh, when while looking how the concept of regime is presenting new inputs 
with reference to various concepts that are there in the realm of IR theory and practice. For example, Stephen Krasner in his work Structural Conflict, The Third World Against Global Liberalism, the work from University of California Press 1985. In this concept work, Krasner analyzes North-South relations applying the international regime's theory. So, this also presents to us new inputs that how regime theory can give us a new conceptual framework to look at issues of development divide, inequalities with reference to global governance dynamics. Another important aspect that is looking at the functional theory of international regimes. To elaborate further on this argument, the work by Robert Kyohan that is after hegemony, cooperation in discord in the world political economy, the work from Princeton University Press 1984 also presents significant new additions with respect to issues of interdependence and cooperation and looking at the functional ambit of international regimes. Another important work that today the idea and concept of international regimes cannot be just situated to the realm of theory but that this theories and, and this norms and ideas have a bearing with reference to the you know coming up with a bigger picture of a collective international society. The work of A. Harrell that is looking at deliberating on the relationship between international regimes and international society that is uh, the name of the work international society and the study of regimes a reflectivist approach this work is from uh, Clarendon Press Oxford 1995. So we get the sense that how today regimes are having a bearing with reference to emergence and propagation of the idea of international society also. Now dear learners we must also look at the other side that no doubt international regimes present an important input in the IR theory but there has been work critiques have pointed out that there are also issues within, within this concept. One of the criticism that is there with reference to regime theory perspective is that there are definitional issues. It means different things to different people and in the similar way it leads to lack of conceptual clarity. So definitional issues and lack of conceptual clarity if you look at where if you take reference to various work the critiques have pointed out that these are areas of concern with reference to the issues of regime. Now further as we are deliberating there are another issues that we must look at the concept of regime uh, that is when we look at this very interesting work by Oran Young governance in world affairs from Cornell University Press 1999. This work presents the idea that deciding different types, what are the factors that really go in to decide different types of regime that is regulatory, whether it is a procedural regime, programmatic or generative. All these do have a very important bearing while analyzing the significance of the concept of regime. So what we get here is in the similar vein, it is also important to explore how regimes interact with each other and also when we are looking that the world today is defined by space, time, compression, state exists with non-state actors, idea of security is multidimensional. So one must understand how domestic actors are influenced by regimes and also how domestic actors influence state decisions regarding regimes. So what we see here is study of regimes has become an important concept with reference to the theories and perspectives in the domain of international relations with the publication of the special issue of journal International Organization in 1982. Stephen Krasner defines regimes as implicit or explicit principles, norms, rules and decision making procedures around which actors expectations converge in a given area of international relations. We know that issues are contested yet study of international regimes 
is important in IR, looking at international cooperation, new developments, interdependence, trade, governance mechanisms, all of which cannot be neglected. Dear learners, we hope that the lecture presented significant inputs and insights. We look forward to positive, encouraging feedback from you all. Thank you very much.